what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So for the next 20 momentos, you have some quality time with yours truly. So let's go ahead and jibba jabba chit and chat it and uh, let's start the damn thing. So today we are here creating Rosa Blanca, which is a Colombian restaurant for yours truly, Rosa Vededas, in our get together LP. She is so excited to finally be able to invest her retirement funds into something she can pass on to her daughter, her daughter's daughter, and her granddaughter's sons and kids and whatever else. Just something like a family heirloom almost that they can keep in the family for generations to come. Um, I did actually play uh, or did record a get together part where we kind of focus a little bit around um, Rosa's new restaurant and her her exciting experience. And there are a couple things about this restaurant that you may need to tweak, but I don't really think that you'll need to do much. I mean, if you're coming just to enjoy a meal, you won't have to do anything. But if you are coming here and trying to own it and operate it yourself, you're probably going to need to dumb down the menu a little bit, make it a little bit realistic and easier for your employees and just a couple other various things that you might need to do. There's a really odd thing where everyone likes to gather in the back of the building next to the bushes I don't know you'll see that a little bit later on like what I'm talking about and where I'm talking about but other than that this restaurant is honestly affordable it's only priced around 60000 and it just has so much character to it that I absolutely am in love. So what I did is I researched a whole bunch of like Colombian-themed restaurants, kind of came out bare and empty-handed. I didn't really see anything that like was like, oh, this is Rosa's personality. I'd originally tried making Rosa Blanca, and when I built kind of freestyling it, um, it always comes out very modern. I don't know why. <laughs> I think I'm just special. I don't know what it is. I definitely need to look at pictures for inspiration and, and just something that's going to help me get out of that and like I'm speaking to you about boxes when this house is literally a freaking square but but it's a square with character let me just go ahead and throw in that in there so it's a Spanish themed restaurant um it's based off a home in Colombia that Rosa once um, saw. And it's just like a little cheap like home or whatever the situation is. It was just on like a little slab of land. It was ran down. Da, 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 da. Rosa wanted to know how much exactly it would cost to get that um, home to Oasis Springs. And, and and they had to ship it in parts and stuff like that. So it was like manufactured or remanufactured together. I don't know how they did it. Magic maybe. And finally she got the home from Colombia all the way to Oasis Springs and was able to throw in some simoleons to make it a restaurant so kind of convert it from a house to a restaurant so that's why it really does look like it's a home and you probably could make this into a house I think it'd be really cool if you did you can convert it back to its roots and I really wanted to focus on some of the more Spanish th style themes um, I really loved like the roof and, and the little ornament that's on top of it I really loved the different textures and things that we use for the fencing um, there's just a whole bunch of things about this house or this restaurant rather that gives it its character and it really makes me feel like this is something Rosa would indeed create if she could actually get hands on with it. I do use a lot of stuff from various expansions. Most importantly, probably movie stuff is the main, um, the main core kind of pack that I use. I feel like a lot because it really gave this home. Um, the, the Spanish themed character, even though it kind of is more of a bohemian theme. It's really weird how you can like almost cross breed these packs to accomplish a style that you're going for. Uh, and then what else do I use? I do use a lot of get together stuff, but I kind of felt like that was fitting because I mean, this is going in a get together LP. And I know I feel like I've been doing a lot of like, you know, just dipping and dallying in the restaurant packs in various um, LPs of mine right now and that's because not everybody watches you know one LP and or all my LPs you know sometimes I have people who only watch one series and it's kind of like Netflix you know you watch that one series and then you go and you watch another one so um, not everybody will get to see my restaurant experiences if they don't um, if I don't put it in more than one LP in the beginning. So if it seems like I'm doing a lot of restaurant stuff, it is. And this is definitely the LP where it's going to be highlighted the most is going to be get together. So if that's something you want to see, definitely um, check out my get together LP. Rosa will be owning and operating this restaurant. In fact, the next part is of her owning and operating this restaurant and some kind of quirky fun little things happened in that so I was really excited to see um her finally having her dreams come true which is a whole nother thing you guys um and when I was making this I was like okay I need to think Rosa I gotta think Rosa you know she really is so particular about the way things look aesthetic to her is everything the way that you look is important the way that your hair is is important the way that your house is kept is important she's a very clean organized 
old lady at the ripe age of 83. She ain't playing no games, okay? She mean business. So when she did make this, um, or when she did convert this house into the restaurant, she really did want to bring in some of her home style charm. She really wanted it to feel like you were stepping into her house and you were welcome, you know, and is sitting around the round table. She really wanted it to be family styled. It didn't want to feel too much to her as a restaurant or an establishment, but more or less of like as if you were walking into a home in Colombia and you were you were a guest with the family. Does that make sense? So that's kind of what I was trying to stay true to. Um, I'm not really that great when it comes comes to the diversity of building quite yet I feel like I am just like with my sims I was originally very stuck on a preset because it was was comfortable wasn't because it's what I preferred it's what I knew um and that's the very same um thing when it comes to building for me currently is I this is like one of my second Spanish themed kind of builds I think the first one was like um the something the jewel of the sand like rea rea de rea de something i freaking i don't even remember the name but i really liked that build and so you know kind of branching out a little bit it's 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 a challenge for me so that's why i was really excited to be able to create something like this and um i had some goals in mind and i think that i accomplished them um to the best of my ability anyway and I kept it within a really relatively decent price range as well. Um, some of the things I did notice in, um, you know, Spanish themed, I keep saying Colombian because I don't know. I just, that's just what I keep calling it. But Spanish themed restaurants is that there is a lot of, um, you know, decor on the walls. There's a lot of plants. There's a lot of foliage. There's a lot of, you know, rustic kind of colors, but vibrant colors at that. And so this is where the movie stuff pack kind of came into play, even though it's more of like a bohemian sort of kind of themed um, pack. I felt like it just really fit because of the prints and the patterns. And that was kind of fun to play around with all the different colors and, and just having fun with it is really what I love the most. And being able to make this something that will be passed down in in, in the LP and, you know, to generations to come in, in the Valeres family. I think is also really important and it kind of um, having that little bit of a modern twist to it because that's something also Rosa doesn't know she is she's 83 like even though she got a little extra pep in a step swagger in her swish she knows what it is she's older and instead of giving her restaurant an old lady theme that nobody wants to come and smell like cotton balls she decided to make it a little more modern and a little more peppy and, and edgy and kind of making it almost like a hangout you know but like a a very warm hang out like a house hang out <laughs> so it's very modern in that sense and it's fun and it's colorful and vibrant and it just has all the beauty of her hometown and um you know of her country that she's so freaking proud of like she is so proud of you know um you know being Colombian and being being a part of that heritage and, and, and that, you know, that culture, that lifestyle. She's just, she's really excited about all that. And I'm probably not saying the terminologies correctly and I probably screwed up and I'm going to get my butt chewed out for some of the things that I said, but Hey, you know what? Good intentions, people, good intentions. But either way, you know, just, just having this, it's just something that she can check off her bucket list because she is getting older. She's not going to live forever. And, uh, this will be something that I feel like she will be able to, um, kind of leave her mark on this earth with. And I love, I love Rosa. So some of the fun things I really liked um, about when I was playing the Get Together LP, and I don't want to give any spoilers, but I really love the fact that we are keeping it in the family. And I don't know how it's going to work out, but I'm really, I'm kind of laughing. I am. So you guys got to check it out. I was kind of dying when I had the options of who to hire. Um <laughs> And it's fun. It's cool. I just hope that it works out. That's all, you know, because uh, when you work together and your family members, things can get a little things can get a little crazy. But I felt like, you know, that would be something also Rosa would want to is if she could ide ide uh, idealistically have everybody work under her roof, she would. But I don't know how that would work out. She's a really picky lady, like very picky, very specific, and she knows what she wants and how she likes it. But so continuing on and talking about the build and, and also giving you like Rosa's life story in the process, um, I had some struggles figuring out how I wanted to, to really have everything laid out, but I do like keeping things separate. 
So for instance, the dining area is just a huge big square. Um, there's a lot of colorful rugs and things like that. And then you obviously have this entryway where you would meet the the hostess um, and, you know, place to see. And then there's also a couple other things that I added in. Like I will add in a bench so that people can come in and sit down and wait if they needed to. I feel like that is very reminiscent of a true restaurant. And also a lot of these Finnish themed restaurants that I've actually dined out. So that's really also a part of my my uh my inspiration i guess you could say is i mean my husband i mean i know you know mexico and um you know the hispanic heritage versus uh you know the spanish or colombian and probably not again not having i have my terminology all wrong but whatever you know what i'm trying to say it's different you know there is some differences there but i am pulling in inspiration from everything that i know and literally giving it my all here so if it's not you know politically correct and and and, and um you know or geographically correct or whatever words i'm trying to throw out there then you know give me some slack jack because honestly i'm just i'm just a white girl from america i don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> i mean really i don't know uh, but I tried, and I think that's cool. You know, I really wanted to add in some diversity into this um, into this build, and I think that I did. I think that I did really well, and I'd be so excited to dine here. I would absolutely love to dine here, and I had I had um, I had some Sims dine here earlier, and and they really seemed to enjoy it. Like when you have your Sims come here, and the aesthetic and everything, they they really like the mood, and they really love the, the the decorations, and so I feel like you could be really successful at this restaurant, minus the two little things I had to tell you about where everyone likes to gather in the back. I don't know why. Um, you know, it's just, it's a really fun, it's a really fun um, establishment. And uh, yeah, so other things that we could talk about while we're waiting for me to finish up building and while you're watching me. I did not like the original, oh, well, obviously you can see that now, but I didn't like the original layout of the restaurant. I don't know. I wanted, um, before we get into the next topic, I, I really wanted to have rustic pieces of furniture, like beaten up, like they've been dragged, you know, from kilometers or miles or whatever. And I wanted them to look like they've, they've been around for a very long time. I really liked that look for some reason. And so I really loved the tables that we were using, um, in the middle there. And then I also wanted to kind of switch out some of the movie style chairs, um, or the movie stuff pack chairs. I wanted to kind of go from these, um, square ones to the more like, you know, I don't know how, like, they look kind of like they're mid-century, maybe. I don't really know how to explain it. But they look really, like, almost like, you know, from maybe not even that. Maybe from, like, the Victorian era. I don't know. They're really pretty, but they fit. Um, and then I wanted to play with some more lighting and stuff like that. I don't like clutter. So when I'm trying to, like, bulk up an establishment and put, like, a whole bunch of things on the walls, it's just, like, it feels like somebody's spitting in my face. I don't <laughs> – it's uncomfortable for me. I mean, it probably – now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, wow, that's really cool, Jen. You should – what the hell are you – damn it, girl – I messed up, man. So if you want to add more stuff to the walls, you can. I just, I, I get claustrophobic. I don't know why. It's stupid. I don't know. In the moment, I'm like, I actually felt my heart beating a little bit heavy. I'm like, this is too much on the walls, man. But anyway, um, really do love the way that the fixings and furnishing, furnishings ended up. And if you're like me by chance and you don't like all that crazy stuff everywhere, then this is perfect. You can take it away, add more, do whatever you got to do. So then I decided to put the little hostess station. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. Apparently I'm playing charades. Nope, not there. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Moving it over here. Nope, nope. How are we about right here? Okay, that looks good. Yeah, sure. Let's change the color up. Is that what? Right? Nope, maybe. Let me move this plant. This is literally what was going through my head. Let me move this plant. Okay, well, we'll come back to that. Put the menu out there. Put a couple of other things on the wall. Anyway, um, some of the things that happened in just my real life situation is we hit 200,000 shukamukas. <laughs> oh my God. Can we even just take a moment to like process that for a second? Your girl can't. I can't. Because I'm nuts. I'm crazy. I'm weird. I make no sense sometimes. Pronunciation sucks. I get told that all the time. And, you know, I may not know everything there is to know about everything, but damn, you know, your girl's, your girl's like literally a freaking, I am like a box of chocolates. Like every video, you never know what you're going to get. It's going to be some sort of randomness. And sometimes, some freaking times, you might get the cream filling chocolate and nobody wants and you bite it off and you put it back in the box. That's your girl. And for somebody, and for two, no, not even somebody, 200,000 people to 
be, you know, somewhat comfortable with the, the chaos that they, they see in my, in my daily videos. That's awesome. You guys are freaking troopers. Um, and it really does, in all, in all sincerity, it really does mean a lot to me because I was never the popular kid at school. I was never somebody that, you know, really had a lot of friends or any friends, really. Um, I was very shy, awkward, and timid. And I suffered with depression. I suffered with uh, other kind of types of mental illnesses. And, um, you know, just kind of being somebody who has always been told, you know, that it's not okay to have that and not, you know, it's not normal to have depression and you're never going to be able to amount to anything as long as you suffer with those, you know, those uh, mental disabilities. And a, I had even a learning disability, which I'm sure is pretty prominent because <laughs> of the way that I, true story, I really did. I, I had a learning disability. I was in special education um, through a lot of my high school years, even though I was extremely smart and passed all the college tests with flying colors believe it or not I was still technically under the school system I had limited learning capabilities I have no idea anyway school systems are just they're weird but you had to put effort into the kid you might as well put them in special ed you know what I mean it's like dumb but anyway um so just kind of being from somebody who's always kind of felt like I was never good enough and um being almost afraid to be my true self I was very like I said antisocial. I was very timid I was very like I was an introvert I did not I was a loner I didn't like to put myself out there and then when I kind of um well when I found YouTube and I was able to kind of not hide behind a blanket so to speak but be able to be myself and be behind a computer screen and or a microphone and just say what I felt and just kind of like close my eyes and upload it and wish for the best and I, I don't know you just build confidence for some reason and even if you met me in real life you'll know how confident I am and it's just weird how my confidence stemmed from doing YouTube videos. I don't know. But either way, it's just really, 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 really exciting and cool to see how far I've come as a person in these last, like, three years, I guess. Because even though I started my channel in, like, 2009, did I say? Um, I didn't even start really uploading, like, I guess, frequently <laughs> until, like, 2013, almost 2013. It was, like, November of 2012. But I don't know. It's just really cool. And I'm so appreciative for you guys. You have no idea. One of my main things and one of the biggest things I've always wanted to advocate on my channel is just to be you, no matter what that is. No matter if people are going to complain, no matter if people are going to judge you, no matter if people are going to criticize you, as long as you stay true to yourself at the end of the day, I mean, that's all that matters. I mean, like I said, at the end of the day, you're all you have to answer to. As long as you can lay your head down at night and be confident with the person that you were that day or the person that you're becoming every day, um, then their opinion doesn't really matter anyway. Does that make sense? So... I don't know. I really think it's really cool that I've inspired so many of you. And the thing is, is you've inspired me too. You've inspired me to be a bigger and better person. You've inspired me to give it my best um, in times and in, in times and in 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 days where I felt like I didn't even want to. Um, I really do aspire every day to make you guys happy and to make myself happy in the process and really just be as humble as I possibly can be. Um, I definitely feel like I give you guys the best of me. <laughs> um, um, and I, I, I'm really proud of that, I guess. I don't know. It's really cool. It's just really cool. I don't know. <laughs> I'm getting like emotional about it. It's so stupid. But anyway, I really hope you guys have enjoyed this speed build and kind of getting to know me a little bit more and my appreciation for you guys. No matter what number though I'm at, like it doesn't, I don't feel appreciative only when I hit big milestones. Like that's the thing. I feel appreciative all the time. Like every time I see a new sugar booger, a new supporter on my channel. You know, it takes a minute for me to realize, like, that's a new person. Like, that is another person who has just supported my channel. Or, like, when I go and I see, like, oh, 300 people have, sub you know, subscribed today. I'm like, wow, that's literally 300 people. Like, what the hell? Like, where do, where do these people find me? <laughs> you know, and it's just, it's almost mind-boggling for me. Um to even be able to process or let alone wrap my mind around that. But I just want you to know, no matter where we're at in this YouTube journey, we're in it together and um, I'm appreciative all the time, every time. So I think we're coming towards the end of the build for Rosa Blanca. Now I was playing with a lot of these signs trying to figure out where I wanted to put them because one of my biggest weaknesses is I love signs. I love the way that they look in the game. Like I am so obsessed. So I was like, maybe I'll just add like a whole bunch of them. But then I realized like that's probably a little redundant. You don't need to do that. Um, I even tried to like remove that window there and then I had to go back and see. Like I always go back and see what my build looks like um, in the photo finder 
uh, or the photo thumbnail for the gallery just to make sure it looks aesthetically pleasing. Like even sometimes just playing with the, the day setting, like whether you're going to have it day or you're going to have night. Um, those are all cool things too that really change the, the overall look of your um, build and really help make it more pleasing to the eye when people are going in and, and looking for something to, um, to download. So I was really excited to see that Spencer's was number four on the gallery for Dianelle. <laughs> I thought that was really, really, really cool. I don't know if it is now, obviously, but at the time it was. And I was just like, wow, like that's pretty amazing. You know, number four, that's a milestone. Um, but yeah, so hopefully uh, Rosa Blanca's will be successful and you guys will enjoy it and love it and download it and share it with me on the gallery or not gallery what the hell am I saying on Twitter <laughs> uh, here we're going in and just kind of doing the final touches I'm selecting the menu now, if you are actually going to aim to own this restaurant or this establishment, you're probably going to need to customize this even further, taking off some of the more harder to make dishes, uh, just to make it easier for your chefs who are just learning how to do the culinary um, culinary career at your restaurant to be able to even, I guess, make these items. So that's the only unfortunate downside is like I customized this uh, menu for people who are just looking to kind of be um, you know, restaurant connoisseurs and just eat there, not necessarily own it. <laughs> so you might need to or um change that up just a little bit, just a little bit, so you guys can um have them be able to make those dishes. But then at least you can go back to this video and reference it and see what was on the original menu and then go back and add it in later. So what we're doing is just kind of changing up some of the outfits for the waiters, the hostess, and the chef. And I think that's about it. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video with a couple screen shots and I hope you all enjoyed. Don't forget to go ahead and comment, read, and subscribe and I'll see you all on the flip side. Bye guys.